Welcome to Psychology to Daf. We are in Gemara Moed Koton, Daf Chaf Beis. And here we're going to talk about functional and dysfunctional family roles. So the Gemara Moed Aleph discusses the impact of the Godol Habayas. That is, the principal member of the family uh, and the effect it has on the Shiva process. The uh, Shiva is... is um, not just observed by the individual, but actually Shiva is really observed by the family. So when Shiva starts or ends may depend on when the Gadol Habayas is present, and the definition of Gadol Habayas seems to depend less on age and rather on role and leadership. Now, Shulchan Aruch in Yoridea, um, Shin Ayin He Sif Beis codifies it as follows, that those who send a body to another large town for burial, and they know not when the corpse will be buried, the, mur- the mourners turn their face and come back from escorting the, the body, and they begin to count the seven and thirty days of mourning. On the other hand, those who accompany the body count the days of mourning from the time that is buried. However, if the chief of the family, the Gadol Habayas, accompanies the corpse, even those who remain here count Shiva only from the time that he's buried. The chief of the family, Shulchan Aruch defines, as the one upon whom the household depends and who are guided by him, irrespective of whether he is a brother or a young son. However, there is one authority who says that he must be at least 13 years old. So that's Shulchan Aruch. And Kitzur Shulchan Aruch in um, Reish Mem, uh, Sif Katan Tess, defines the role further as the person who would assume leadership and decision-making in regard to the burial process. Regardless, we see that the leadership and the family and the role of leadership is not typically just by age or even possibly gender. It, every family organizes itself according to internal patterns, which brings me to a discussion about healthy and unhealthy roles in families. Now, what is a family role? A family role is a set of behaviors and responsibilities that is consciously or unconsciously placed upon a family member that allows for the material and emotional maintenance of the family. Like in an individual, when the roles are healthy, they maintain optimum function and growth, but when they are defending against uncomfortable thoughts and feelings, they often maintain a rigid, stagnant function with little growth. Some examples of unhealthy family roles include the hero. That's a child who is successful in ways that please his or her parents. Emphasis that it's successful as defined by the parents. Sometimes later in life, this catches up to them with feelings of emptiness because the achievement was not intrinsically motivated. Then we have the scapegoat or the troublemaker. This person challenges the family's written and unwritten rules. This role is kind of like a suicide mission. It can either break the denial and cause change or end up literally or figuratively killing everybody. Think of a child who becomes an addict or goes OTD. Then there's the lost child, the child who doesn't make waves and is kind of ignores. He may not be an academic achiever, but since he or she is quiet and doesn't make trouble, she gets socially, or he gets socially promoted. Now this too may backfire later in life with feelings of emptiness and depression, as there's not been much ownership of life process. Then we have the mascot, that's the cute one. Maybe the baby, or the youngest who entertains everybody and distracts from the, dis- from the dysfunction and conflict. This can either make for an adult with high social skills, possibly a person in the entertaining or hospitality kind of industry. Indeed, many comedians tell of stories of their dysfunctional childhoods and how they resorted to humor to break the tension. However, the danger also can be a feeling of worthlessness and depression because not enough self-care was developed. Think of Robin Williams, who committed suicide. And then there's the caretaker. This is a child who helps put the parents physically or financially. He helps out the parents physically uh, or, and financially. Sometimes the dependence is so great that the child never gets married, or if married, the uh, the spouse feels as if the parent is more of a spouse than he or she is. And some examples of healthy roles include a provider of resources. This is the person who provides financial resources for the family. A nurturer, a person who tends to the emotional needs of family members. In this case, I'm referring to normal, healthy uh, nurturance functions such as love, care, empathy. And this is different than codependence, where aside from nurturing and taking care, the nurturer feels compelled out of guilt and fear and often is chasing uh, people down to accept 
the nurturance or forgiving and enabling selfish or self-destructive behaviors. So, <clears throat> then we have the life skills developer, someone who offers practical guidance and wisdom to family members. And we have the manager of the system, the person who makes sure the bills are paid, medical appointments kept, and other maintenance. As with the nurtural role, it should come out of normal needs and not fear, anxiety, or guilt. An obsessive person can overmanage in a compulsive, intrusive manner. Okay, so these roles should be relatively balanced, fair, and open to negotiation. It is not unusual for one member of the family or the other uh, to be what's called a flag bearer on a particular set of skills and is not necessarily dysfunctional. In successful marriages and relationships, there often is an uneven distribution of responsibility and talents. It does not have to be equal. The main thing is that it works well and feels motivated out of love and mutual respect for various skills and weaknesses without it feeling coerced or compulsive.